Have you noticed there's a style of video that keeps blowing up on YouTube right now? And if you've not, you will do after you've watched this video. So recently I noticed this pattern and went back to look at my own channel and realized that nearly every time I'd made one of these videos, they'd done amazingly well too. And actually it occurred to me that if I started YouTube again, I'd seriously consider just making this type of video every time. They're clearly in demand, they're way faster to make, you can film them on a webcam, and if you're smart about it, they can blow you up on multiple platforms at once. These things aren't just breaking YouTube, they're breaking the internet. So today I'm gonna show you what this video is, how to make it, what to avoid at all costs, and I'm gonna tell you a secret. I've not told anyone this before. It's something I do to boost retention on them, and some of you might not be that happy about it. So what the heck is this video, and why should you seriously consider making it? To explain, I need to suck some memories out of my head, and then I'm gonna play them back to you on this laptop right here. So that's me in 2021. Sorry about the old Toto, the old memory download is not particularly accurate. Anyway, I was feeling really burnt out, and I was worried about taking a break from posting videos, in case people just forgot who I was. So I decided on a quick fix. I need to make a video that doesn't take very long. I need a filler video. And that's what I did. And it performed absolutely rubbish. Which I shrugged <sighs> off thinking, that's what happens when you don't spend long on a video, baby. Anyway, months later, I decided to try it again. Whoa. But this time, the video picked up 200,000 views really fast, and I realized my dumb mistake from the first time. Hang on a second. So I made another filler video, and that did okay, and then another and another, and combined they picked up like 2 million views. You're a flipping genius, Eddie, baby. No one's more handsome or smarter or funnier or taller than you. So before I reveal why this one failed so badly and how to make this type of video, let me show you what this magic views beast is, because I think it might surprise you. Ta-da! It's just a really simple interview video. This one has a million views, shot on a webcam. This one, 200,000 views. Shot on a webcam. And this is a more recent one. Shot on a webcam. What I love about these filler videos is they prove you don't need anything more than a simple setup to get insane results. So long as you follow the rules and the system that I'm about to show you. Oh, and by the way, if you're thinking, well, of course those blew up. When you interview someone famous, it'll always do better. Well, don't think that because rule number one is the reason my first interview failed and will show you why you don't need famous faces for epic results. So let me explain this golden rule. On a scale of one to 10, how interested are you in listening to this man? All right, what about now? If I told you that that man invented Nintendo. How interested are you? When you make an interview video and you don't talk to someone who has a personal brand that is instantly recognizable by a lot of your target viewers, all you need to do is work out how to represent the most interesting thing about them in the thumbnail and title to get the click. Now it's got nothing against your guests, but naming them or even using their face in the thumbnail could actually do more damage than good because your viewers won't understand who they are or what value they have to offer. And that's why my second filler interview did so much better than the first because I didn't mention the guest at all in the thumbnail or title, but instead just focused on the awesome thing they had achieved that really appealed to my viewers. Bringing us on to the next golden rule and probably the dumbest mistake I've ever made producing an interview video because it turned my simple edit into a 50 hour marathon. So a while ago I made this interview with Joshua Mayo and I asked him to record his side of the screen so I could have a multi-cam feeling to the interview. And he sent me files that look like this. So what had happened was he recorded me on his computer and I recorded me, which meant most of the video clips I ended up getting were tiny little screens of Joshua that you can't blow up because they'll lose all their quality. That meant I had to find a way to save this interview and it took me 50 hours in the edit to do that. So the golden rule here is, if you were shooting an interview and you want it to be high quality, just use Riverside. This is software that records your camera and theirs, and it records what's on screen, and it uploads everything separately to the cloud. What you end up with is multiple files that you can then edit separately, which will just give you so many more options in the edit to level up your interview. But not only that, it doesn't downgrade the footage quality. So you can get 4K, but also if your connection drops during the interview, it doesn't matter. Your guest footage keeps getting uploaded. And since I've discovered this, I've not stopped using it any of my interviews and it would have enabled me to blow up this interview on other platforms which I'll show you how to do later on. So check out Riverside by clicking on the link in the description. You can sign up for free and you can use the code FILMBOOTH for 20% off. Anyway, let's move on to the next golden rule that pretty much everyone who makes interview videos breaks and it ruins the chance of their video exploding. Now you're probably sick to death of hearing this, but if you don't do your title and thumbnail first, you probably give your video 90% less of a chance of performing, maybe even more. But when it comes to making an interview video, it's even more important for two reasons. Firstly, it's likely that you might need to brag about your participants' achievements to get a click. So you need to make sure they're okay with you 
bragging in the packaging. The other reason this is really important is you need to tell the guests the title of the interview so they can keep it in mind when they answer their questions. This is going to enable them to be way more targeted with the answers and it will help them keep in line with the reason that your viewer clicked in the first place, which should boost retention and make your edit 10 times easier. This relates heavily to our third rule and I believe it's the reason this interview got 1 million views. Because when I reached out to Hayden, probably one of the world's most respected YouTube video editors, I said this. Hey man, can I interview you on the channel? I mean, yeah, just go send me the so I can prepare. I, don't worry, it's just like a casual chat. We don't need any questions. No, I have to prepare so I can give the best answers possible. Oh, you're such a pain in the ass. I know, it's great. Okay, maybe I didn't say that. But he was totally right. And I remember after that interview thinking to myself, that was hands down some of the best information on editing I've ever heard. The way he explained things was so perfect. He'd come up with a metaphor the night before to explain an often really complex point about quality versus quantity. And hundreds of people commented how it had been a really big light bulb moment for them. So send your guests questions, ask them to repair, let them know who your target viewers are too, and the big problems and interests they have, and gently remind them, hey bozo, this is a filler video you're gonna be in. So take it seriously, put in the work, and we might get a million views together. Bringing us on to the next rule, which is so important because people won't listen to your guest if you mess it up. And secondly, because it sets up the reason for your viewers to want to watch all the way to the end of the video. And I am of course talking about your intro. And sadly, most people start with something like this. Hey Dave, great to have you on. Oh, thanks Steve, how's the wife? Yeah, she's good. How's your wife? Oh, she left me. Oh yeah, I forgot about that, sorry man. Which is eye gougingly dull. But what should you do instead? Well, to find out, I asked two people who I consider to write the best intros for interviews on the planet it to reveal their top three intro tips. Okay guys, what's the golden rule for writing an intro for an interview? We have two. One we call the slap. We're gonna hit you with a really piece of valuable information that can essentially make you go, wait, what? And then after that, you have to convince the audience why they should care about whatever it is you're talking about. You have to give them a good reason to stay and why it's important to their lives. The next golden rule for your viral filler video interview is so often ignored and it's gonna go against the grain of what many others believe, but screw them. This is my video, so what the heck I want. That is because because I believe you should delete a lot. Here's why. The UK office ended forever after two seasons and everyone was like, oh, I wish there was more. The Simpsons, however, nobody's ever wished there were more episodes of that for the last 15 years, probably. And that's how I think of interviews. Make people wish there was more. And to do that, you need to cut out everything but the best answers. So you create that give me more feeling. But also the best guests in the world will go off on tangents or give answers that are weaker. So do them, your viewers, and yourself a favor and delete anything that isn't top notch. I mean, you wouldn't leave a section in your regular video that you didn't think was that great, would you? Now I'm gonna caveat this and say, this is my way of doing it. Other people leave everything in, which keeps it more authentic. But if you're like me and you sprinkle interviews in on your channel and your average video is only about 10 minutes it's long, a 60 minute interview might not be in line with your viewers' expectations, although you can test things out. Don't let me stop the test fest. All right, so remember earlier when I said there was this thing that I did to make an interview retention higher that you might not like? It's time to reveal that thing. Don't get annoyed at me, okay? I'm telling you for a good reason. So what tends to happen when you interview people is they sometimes answer a question you didn't really ask because when you talk nonstop for like an hour, that just happens. It kind of, you lose focus a bit. And that's why in many of the interviews I've made in the past on Film Booth, the question you, the viewer, sees me ask the guest is not actually the question I asked them. They'll have said something and I have thought to myself, wow, that was such a great comment. But because they said it on a tangent and it wasn't part of the original question I asked, it kind of makes the guest look less slick and it can also confuse the viewer. So yeah, I just reshoot myself asking the question that sets up the answer they actually gave. Now, before we look at the overwhelming proof that this video style is probably the most powerful in the world right now, let's address the big concern. How the heck do I get good guests on my channel? Because that's really gonna be key here. Well, the thing is, good does not mean they have millions of followers. A good guest is someone that gives amazing, well thought out answers. So how do you find them? Well, first you just go and listen to podcasts or watch interviews around topics that your viewers will care about and then make a hit list of people you think did the best job. For me, the best guests are the people who are fantastic at explaining things in a really simple way anyone can understand. So if when listening to an interview you feel that, get them on your list. And then once you've found a few that tick those boxes, track down a contact email and write some super intriguing headlines to it. Something that's gonna make them wanna open it. And then in the email, just keep things very brief. Do not write a book thousands of words, keep it as short as you can, tell them the potential title of the video you want to run with, bullet point what you want to discuss, and try to focus on writing a brief that might excite them to say yes. You will be surprised by how many top guests aren't that interested in your following size with the right brief. And at the end of the day, you're doing all the work for them, they can share that content to their audience and still make sales and build a following like that too. Now, if you're not sold on interviews yet, then this just has to be the ultimate clincher because I actually came across a massive trend getting interview videos, billions of views. Go on any short form platform, 
platform and you're going to notice that clips from interviews are everywhere. In fact, they're so flipping powerful, people are now producing fake interviews of themselves and then uploading the clips in this style because it does so well. And I think that's because when you look like you're being interviewed, you look more credible and people are more likely to take notice of credible people. So for anyone who wants to grow a personal brand like anywhere on the internet, you can get like 10 pieces of content from one video. In fact, Riverside actually make a transcript which you can then search by words and then easily cut out the clips to re-upload to Shorts, TikToks, Reels, Twitter. Interviews are the most versatile video in the world. They are the egg of the video kingdom. Or a potato, what's more versatile? So check out Riverside by clicking on the link below this video. You can sign up for free and you can get 20% off using the code FILMBOOTH. The thing is though, maybe interviews won't work on your channel or you're just not that excited about making them. Is there another kind of video that could have such epic results. Well, yeah, of course there is. Watch this video next to learn the simple system to get faster and easier views.